In this clip, Joe and Katie Sackhoff talk about a mysterious object making its way toward our solar system. Take a look. Have you been paying attention to this um, object that's hurtling towards Earth? It's called A30. They're calling it A31. It's actually named 3I Atlas, just so you know. I try to, to avoid things that are going to give me nightmares. Um, the, are we going to send... Are we gonna... extraterrestrial, perhaps. Is it really? We're going to meet the aliens finally? There's something weird about it. Um, we were just going over it the other day. There was an article that was stating that Whatever they use to detect, like what what is around this, like what the, they can detect the composition, whether it's like mostly water, or vapor, or mostly iron. This thing is giving off the indications that is an alloy that is only exists on Earth through industrial alloy, alloy making processes. Okay. That it's not a natural metal. Isn't it wild that scientists can figure out what a planet nearly 400 million miles away is made of, but somehow we still can't get stable mobile data while flying in a plane? Okay. And there's, that's what, the, what they're getting is the signal that this thing that is hurling through space, this massive object that's moving, by the way, from the same direction in space where the wow signal came, I don't know what that is. The wow signal is a, they believe, uh, intelligently generated signal that they picked up. I think it was in the 70s. It was in the 70s? Yeah. I you should know, they, know this. Are, I'm going to lose my nerd credit. No, no, it's okay. It's, it's a weird one. It's a little obscure. So they, I don't know what the exact technique they were using to monitor radio waves in space, mm -hmm. but they got a signal. So here it is. The WOW signal is a powerful 72-second narrow-band radio signal detected on August 15th, 1977 by the Big Ear Radio Telescope at Ohio State University, which initially suggested an extraterrestrial origin. Uh, named for the WOW written in printout by the astronomer Jerry uh, Eamon. For context, this is Jerry Eamon. In 2017, he commented on the signal, saying he values science over speculation. He mentioned that while the signal is still unexplained, it's most likely not of extraterrestrial origin. Uh, the signal had characteristics expected from a technological source, but follow-up efforts have failed to detect it again. The leading hypothesis is that a natural, natural astrophysical event, such as a flare from a magnetar, briefly illuminated a cold hydrogen cloud, causing it to emit radio signal similar to a laser, or it's a laser. And then this I mean, object is like... coming from that. From that area. Yeah, look at that. They sent you a signal. A cool fact, they called it the wow signal because when the data came in, Eamon literally scribbled wow on the printout in disbelief. And then now this thing <laughs> is coming through there. So if you think like how fast this thing is going, if it came from, you know, the other side of the galaxy, it's probably exactly how long it would take to get here. So... It's coming directly for Earth? No, it's it's coming near Earth. Right, um, so we're not worried it's going to hit no, us. No, I don't believe we're worried. That it's going to swing by at roughly 170 million miles from Earth on December 19th, 2025. Right now, it's hiding behind the sun, so we won't be able to spot it again until early 2026. Kind of wild to think it's just months away. I seriously can't wait to see the photos they capture when it gets that close. Well, I'm going to find out tomorrow. Avi Loeb, uh, an astronomer from Harvard, is coming okay. on. Amazing. And he's going to uh, enlighten us as to what, what this thing is all about. But That's pretty exciting. The last time Avi Loeb appeared on JRE was back on January 16th, 2021. He was there to talk about that mysterious space object, Oumuamua, which eventually turned out to be a bit of a letdown. Hopefully, 3i Atlas doesn't end up the same way. Stick around on the channel to catch his thoughts on this one. It's all, it's weird. Like, as it gets closer, it's weirder and weirder. So like, it, they've never seen anything like this thing before. But is it possible, then, that another planet out in the, like, universes, mm -hmm. like, isn't made up of, has alloy properties, and it could have chipped off, and it's now hurtling through space? Yeah, you would have to ask, like, a metallurgist that question. That's a good question. We, they just know the only way it exists on Earth is through this industrial process, if huh. it is that stuff. Yeah. Why do they think it's that stuff? Do you remember that article? We looked it up, like, a couple of days ago. It, um, look, it's so fun to think it's a spaceship, to th of so fun to is. think the Cylons are coming. Because <laughs> they might be. Yeah, they might be. Do you think they're coming to save us, or...? <laughs> I think they would have already stepped in if they were going to do that. 
they would have stepped so. in. Yeah, sure. There's been, you know, they would have stepped in right after World War II. I don't They'd know. be like, hey, 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 with the fucking nukes. Or maybe it all started when we decided it was fine for men to compete in women's sports. Kind of feels like that was the first big clue this whole civilization was starting to fall apart. Or do you, or do you think they're in. just up, up there going, you're going to have to save yourself, kids? Perhaps. Maybe. Perhaps it's a process that all intelligent emerging life goes through. And then, you know, you have to kind of let it go through the process, like you have to let your kids fall down. Um, in contrast to all node comets, including the interstellar comet 21 Borisov, the observed spectrum of the gas plume around 31 Atlas shows prominent nickel emission, but no evidence for iron. Other than 31 Atlas, this anomaly was only known to exist in industrially produced nickel alloys through the carbonyl chemical pathway, which refines nickel through the formation and decomposition of nickel tetracarbonyl. Carbonyl, tetracarbonyl. The authors of the new paper postulate that this carbonyl process is realized naturally near the nucleus of 31 Atlas. Uh, what? I honestly don't see the point of Joe even reading this. There's no chance anyone, Joe included, is going to make sense of whatever that's supposed to mean. They argue that this in situ formation of this thing predicts that nickel should be strongly concentrated near the nucleus. So it's like the whole thing is some very weird metal. That's right. the point. And it's it's also they're, they're it's weird the way it's moving. What are they saying about the way it's moving? There's something about self-correcting or something. I think they thought it had some emission. I don't know. It looked like a jet, but I don't think so. It seemed no. It did seem <laughs> like they were saying that it's, it's very changed. far away. It's very far away. So they're, yeah, they're zoom in and so maybe it's the silence coming back. They're have like, we have to go save our it? parents. You seen they got a telescope that actually took video of it. That's what amazes me, is that we have telescopes that can see that far. Crazy stuff, honestly. It barely even feels real. Imagine if the whole thing was just a giant psyop meant to keep us distracted from what's actually going on. I mean, every one of these telescopes is run by NASA, and it's not like they've never kept secrets from the American public before. I can send it to you, Jamie. Um, this guy has it on his uh, Twitter page. I, but it's like, it's very um, low resolution, obviously, because it's fucking millions of miles mm -hmm. away. But uh, whatever it is, is really weird. It's really weird. I, you know, people ask me all the time like if I believe in aliens, I think just like because this. of what I do for a living and the of genre course. that I'm in. And, and you I know, wait to talk to you about aliens. what I always say, you're going to be vastly disappointed that I know so little about them. But what I always say is I think it's a line from a movie um, where it would be an awful waste of space if yeah, it was it just is. us. Yeah, that is a line in a movie. I don't remember what movie it was. It's from the movie with Jodie Foster. Contact. Contact. Oh. When her dad says to her that it would be an awful waste of space. Yeah. Beautiful movie. That's a great movie. Mm -hmm. For all you young folks who've never seen Contact, this is what we're talking about. There would be literally millions of civilizations out there. Well, if there wasn't, it would be an awful waste of space. That movie is an absolute timeless masterpiece. Drop a comment below if you're with me on this one. Carl Sagan wrote that book. That's it. So this is the thing. Like, what is that? What the fuck is this? Like, obviously low resolution, obviously moving through space, mm -hmm. but also, what the hell is that? Why is it that every time something insane happens, the footage looks like it was filmed on a 2000 Nokia brick? The crazier the event, the worse the camera quality gets. Well, it seems to be moving pretty quickly, yeah? Yeah, it looks like a spaceship. I mean, Imagine it also looks it like really... a dust bunny. <laughs> I was uh, showing uh, my friend Matt last night. We were having dinner, and I was showing him videos of praying mantises killing hummingbirds because he didn't believe it. Stop. He's like, no way. Well, they're big. Praying mantises can be quite big, right? Um, not in comparison to hummingbirds. It's crazy how strong they are. Like, Stop. They, they literally kill hummingbirds? They snatch hummingbirds right off feeder. So they sit, sit by the hummingbird feeder motionless, and the hummingbird comes in to take a drink and just snatches them. What do they do with them? Eat them. Stop. It's crazy. <laughs> Praying mantises are it makes so me really sad. ruthless. I have Well, they eat their own young, right? They probably do. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they do that, but I know that they like they put a praying mantis and uh, in a box, and then they'll drop a roach in, and the praying mantis just just snatches it up and just starts eating the roach alive. Yeah, but that Eats doesn't make me roach. feel bad. 
but it does it to this bird. I'd love to roll the footage on this one, but something tells me YouTube wouldn't be too thrilled about it. You're going to have to dig this one up on your own. That makes me feel bad. But the thing <laughs> is, like, why couldn't that be an intelligent life form from another planet? Like, and then come come here on 31 Atlas and land. I mean, that is a, that's, that is a possibility. Imagine that, honestly, the dumbest alien to fight. No contest at all. Launch a rocket right through its ugly mug. All you'd need is a bottle of bug spray, and that's lights out, pal. Well, that's the thing, right, is that we spend so much time, or I guess in our imagination, like, we've been conditioned to think that, uh, you know, intelligent life looks like something yeah. from these movies. So we all think intelligent life is, you know these guys with big heads or they look like us or you know whatever we think but they absolutely could literally be a flea it could be a six foot tall mantis it could be thanks for watching i'd really love to hear your thoughts down in the comments make sure to like subscribe and tap that notification bell so you don't miss future videos catch you in the next one